What is up everybody? Um, so I just got back to the yard from a, um, a tow down south in Salton City. Um, had to go take the rotator because it was the only truck we had and go tow like a maintenance truck back here to Coachella. Couldn't record it because it was one of our accounts, but I did that. So um, now what we're gonna do is we are going to put some fuel in the rotator. There's the fuel cap. Yes, um, so we're gonna put some fuel in the rotator. Um, I got you in the truck right now because it's a little windy out here. But we're at about half a tank, a little less than half a tank. So we're gonna go ahead and put some fuel in it and uh, put it away. So I am waiting to hear from Quinn Cat. Uh, they're right down the street from us. I went over there and asked them today if, uh, well, how much they charge me to uh, rent a skid steer with a broom attachment uh, for a few hours. They don't do hour rentals, but since we do a lot of work with them, they're, they're usually willing to work with us. So it sounds like they're, I'm just waiting for a call from them when that thing's ready. So that might be today, might be tomorrow. I told them whenever it's convenient for them, let me know. Uh, so they should be calling here hopefully shortly and we're gonna go ahead and my main goal is to work on this over here main goal is to work on that shed there because that is where we parked the rotator and Darl's truck and then I also want to hit the other bay where we parked the other 35 ton but basically the problem that we're running into right now is we park the trucks and either when we're backing in the fans are running and it's just blowing dust all over the place or when we set the brake and it exhausts all the air out of the brake cans it just blows dust all over the place so you clean the truck spend a bunch of time cleaning the trucks and then as soon as you set the brakes or back it in it gets filthy so we're gonna try to alleviate that issue just a bit so we'll see how that goes um, yeah. So that's what I was gonna talk about. So for those concerned, um, upon popular request, a lot of people were asking why we haven't put a shop radio in the rotator. The simple answer to that is that it requires you to, at least with our radios, it requires you to drill a small hole in the roof. Not really a big deal, but we just got the truck, just spent big bucks on it, so we weren't really keen on uh, drilling a hole into the roof, um, but we've been using the truck a lot more than we anticipated for stuff that it's kind of crucial to call in uh, when you get on scene and when you go in tow just for like billing purposes. So um, we installed the radio. I'll show you the radio here. Yeah, it's nothing crazy. It's our standard radio that we use all the time. It's a Motorola. Um, this is not, that's the CB mic. So here is the microphone cord. We just have it hung up there. Whoever built this truck, uh, well, I know who built it, Miller Industries built it. They put the thing here the for the CB mount, and then this is up here. So I don't know if that's like standard in Peterbilt, and then this was here. It doesn't really make sense. So we got CB mic hanging there, and that mic hanging there. Not really a big deal, but it kind of looks goofy. Um, but yeah, so now we got the camera, or the... Um, radio here under the CB and then um, we also have cameras in all our trucks if you didn't notice right there that is a camera that is also GPS tracking and yeah records and just gives us a little bit of a uh, insurance policy essentially so let's go and check on the fuel all right 77 gallons into the rotator Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is show you guys how we call in fuel. We have two ways of doing it. Um, I will show you the call in, uh, the uh, digital way. We have two ways. You can either call it in on the radio and they'll input it on the computer system, um, or we can do it from our phones and it goes to that same computer system. It's um, a system that we use to manage all of our maintenance, all of our fuel, um, DEF, and like miscellaneous parts purchases. Um, so for example, when this truck is due for a 90 day, 
it will say due for a 90 day. When it is due for maintenance, it'll say due for maintenance. Let's start the truck up. Full fuel, just under full def, so I'm all right with that. So what we do is we use this app called Surefleet. And like I said, this does all our maintenance. And then I'm gonna log in here. Okay, so we have all of our, um, let's see, it'll focus. We have all of our vehicles listed here. So I can go through and find the rotator. Mm -hmm. Where are you hiding? 2019 Peterbilt 389X rotator. So click on that. Now we're on that vehicle now. Focus. So anyway, um, so we have all the issues that you can see here. What we can do is go, we also do all our pre-trip inspections on here, by the way. So did a pre-trip this morning before I left on here. So now we go fuel update, uh, company owned pump. Then we go odometer. So it's gonna ask me for the odometer. We go over here, we have 4,337 miles. Um, let me, I have to go check the meter over here really quick because I forgot. Okay, so now that I have that inputted, I just click save and it saves. So what that does is it sends to the main computer system what the current fuel consumption, miles per gallon, and a bunch of other statistics um, based on each truck. And it tells us um, either if we're being inefficient or where we could pick up on efficiency, stuff like that. Um, and then it also updates the miles. So um, each truck based on what the manufacturer recommends is on a service interval. So for example, don't quote me on this, but I wanna say I have this one on like the 10,000 mile service interval, which we'll actually service this one a little early because it's a brand new truck. But, um, say, for example, say I have it on 10,000 miles, it will notify me on the computer system, it'll send me an email, it'll notify me on the computer as well, that this truck is, when it is 500 miles away from service. So that gives me, uh, on this truck it'd give me a while, but on the other trucks like the flatbeds, it gives me, let's say, a few days to coordinate, hey, this guy is gonna be off, this truck's gonna be here, so therefore, let's service it on that day so we don't have a truck down, essentially. So it's a pretty neat system. It allows us to be pretty efficient in our maintenance records and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and park the truck. Okay, so we parked the rotator. Now what I think I'm gonna do is show you guys two new wrecks that we brought in. Uh, Darl was in the rotator while I was at the Vegas show. Uh, pretty busy, he got two accidents in one night. Um, I think one of them has already been picked up and then he had an accident last night that he dealt with. Um, the first two were two, the first two, two trucks rear-ended each other, if that makes sense. One truck rear-ended another, that was the first one. One truck rear-ended another, that was the second one. Those were in the same night and then Darl yesterday. Um, guy probably fell asleep and he went into the guardrail. So, probably go around the yard and show you that. We got those, most of that here in the yard. Hello. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna go, focus. We're gonna go show you the two wrecks that we got, and yeah, so let's go. I brought the golf cart over here. Um, the golf cart we use very frequently just to run to the parts store, which is right down the street, and then uh, just like around the shop stuff, respooling uh, flatbed cables and stuff like that. So here is the golf cart. It's got just kind of miscellaneous stuff back here. So let's check it out. Mm. Okay, so this one, um, I don't know what happened. I know, I know for a fact that that one rear-ended. Oh, you know, I know what happened, okay. This one was hooked up to those trailers over there. 
So this is the one that went into the guardrail two nights ago, or last night. Yeah, two nights ago. So, yeah. Um, let's take a look at what we got. We got the drive line pulled on the ground. Um, man, that fifth wheel plate's really far back. And then, what else we got here? Looks like the front axle was knocked back. So I'm assuming that this is the side, yeah, this is the side where we hit the guardrail. So we smacked into the guardrail there, and then knocked the whole axle back. Um, while we have this air, or this, uh, what's it called? Air dryer very exposed while we have this air dryer super exposed um, a lot of times ways that you can air this thing up you can pull this line off this is the main discharge line that pumps air into the air tanks you can pull that line off and then put your own fitting onto this line from your truck and it'll supply the whole air tank just a little little thing I'm sure the way that Darl aired this up if it has it maybe it doesn't a lot of times these have an air uh, a plug on them that you can pull off and air from there but as we can see the axle is knocked back looks like it crunched into the uh, side fairings a bit got into the hood a little bit but yeah other than that this truck's in decent shape Okay, so it looks like, I know this was the second accident that we did. This guy obviously smacked into someone's truck really hard. Got a bunch of debris here, so let's see if we can get over it. Holy smokies. That guy smacked. So what happened was, because of the backup, as we were essentially just leaving an accident, this accident happened in the backup. This guy plowed into the back of someone, as you can see. Let's just take a look at some of the carnage here. Um, not seeing too much engine damage, it looks like. Um, obviously, the hood just got demolished. But um, you can see the radiators tilted back. Uh, looks like we might got a little bit of frame bending in there. This is where the carnage is. Holy smokes. Look at that. I mean, this guy survived, by the way. Insane. Looks like the drive line is sitting right here. I don't, I, this has gotta be the hood, or the, like, the upper cowling of this truck. So, I mean, look at the stinking sleeper is wide open. Imagine if someone's sleeping back there. So, the whole sleeper got peeled back. So it almost looks like what happened, because this guy went off on the left of the road, it almost looks like what happened was he was coming to a stop, tried to avoid him, went to the left and clipped the truck, uh, the trailer, with the right side of the truck. Look at, this is, this is a kind of eye-opening. Look at the offset here. And then imagine the side of the cab where it's supposed to be and then look where it actually is. I mean, just look how wide it is. That, that's, that right there is supposed to be the side, but it just got peeled back. That's crazy. Hopefully this wind isn't too bad. So this is a lean sail car that we have here in the yard. And look at this beautiful fabrication here. We got uh, two, well, we got two wood screws, a self-tapper, and a hex screw here, driven in straight into the hood with a nice angle bracket here. And we got uh, we got some masking tape uh, insulation here with masking tape butt connectors. I've never seen those before. Those are pretty nice. Uh, wow. The things you see, it's pretty incredible. You just kind of, every, every car that clears lean, when it's been here for too long, we have to go through, clean it out. You find some things that you're just like, makes you shake your head. So, anyway, uh, let's go see what else we can get our hands on. 
So story time. Uh, Quinn Cat just called me. Like I said, I uh, am renting a skid steer from them. They just called me and said, hey, the machine was ready. We were just about to call you, but we just figured out that the last customer to use it put diesel in the hydraulic tank. Uh, I feel for you, Quinn Cat. I'm sure they see stuff like that all the time. So no worries. We will wait. It's not like I told them. It's not a rush job. It's whenever it's convenient for you guys. So we will wait to see if they say we might be able to get it today. So uh, if not, we'll just get to it first thing tomorrow morning. Uh, anyways, let's go check out what else is going on. Okay, so now what I have to do is fulfill some paperwork duties. So we have some work orders here from the week. Uh, this particular one, we replaced some tires on a truck, just wear and tear stuff. So what I have to do now is take these paper invoices. They're bending a piece of metal to fabricate something. Anyway, what I have to do is take this uh, paper copy and put it in our computer system. That way we have double entry um, redundancy, more, more or less. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. Where'd you go and what'd you take? Camera. <laughs> what'd you, where'd you go and what'd you take? Uh, tractor, uh, Rialto. Is that all you have to say on that? That's all I had. Was it easy? Huh? Was it easy? Yeah. Not too bad. Not the drive line. Well, you know what? It had two different sized bolts on the drive shaft. So oh, custom. Had to crawl back out, out of there and get, get a different the, the right socket. Yeah. Sure.
so we're on that on-call life right now. Um, I was just about to go home. I ran that uh, skid steer brush until uh, six o'clock is when I had to have it back. And then right as I was walking out the door, um, one of our accounts called and come to, they want us to come to their yard and pick up a truck that is a good unit and take it out to a bad unit and bring the bad unit back to their yard. So they don't want us there till 8.30 to pick up that truck. It is seven o'clock. In my opinion, there's no reason to go home and then be there for like 10 minutes and then come back. So I'm here at the yard. I just picked up a bite to eat um, and a milkshake. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna kind of hang out here until they're, it's ready to go, ready, it's time to leave. And then, uh, yeah. So that is the life of a tow truck operator. I'll show you the uh, amount of that's the amount of material that we put in the dumpster. In hindsight, I shouldn't have put it in the dumpster. I didn't realize how much I actually picked up until it got to that point and I could actually see um, in the dumpster how much was in there and I was like, oh crap. Um, trash day isn't for another few days. So we might take that tomorrow and dump it out into our, um, into our um, loader and dump it over the wall or something. There's a empty dirt lot behind us or maybe we'll spread it out in the back um, where there's some low spots. So yeah, um, now we're just gonna eat and kind of hang out for a bit. So I don't know if this is the end of the vlog yet, but I feel by the time I'm done with this call, I probably will be done and asleep. So we'll see. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna eat. We'll talk to you later. All right, uh, so we just got back to the yard. Now we are gonna go back out. Uh, we got another call. We're taking the Landall to go get a, uh, a bus. I can't record this call because it is a um, account of ours, but I'm just letting you guys know what's going on. So um, yeah, we're gonna get a few things out of the rotator that I'm gonna need on this call. I'm gonna grab the Guardian Angel lights. Usually these uh, buses are in pretty bad spots, so I'm gonna take the Guardian Angel lights and my hard hat with me for a little bit of extra protection. All right, so the rotator here, I got my uh, hard hat with the amber Guardian Angel. And then I also have my blue Guardian Angel that I will grab as well. We'll go ahead and uh, get the Kenworth started up here and take that. Show you guys this. We uh, put a new bumper on the Kenworth. It's a nice Texas Square bumper. Pretty shiny. So, nice new bumper on the Kenworth now. All right, I'm going to go ahead and head out on this call and we'll probably talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for watching, guys.